Hi, this is Scott Kilos here, 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, and I wanted to do a little update on my Snubnose radio project. As I discussed in the previous video, I was uh, experimenting around with using my FT4X as kind of a pocket radio, and I did uh, quite a bit of discussion on that whole concept. And also during that video, I talked about how I was thinking of doing the same thing with the Yaesu VX6. And as you can see here, uh, I have uh, comparing the two radios side by side, as you can see, they are the Yaesu VX6 is just slightly shorter, a little bit wider, a uh, good bit heavier. So it does, uh, you know, you definitely need to be thinking about a, a decent cargo pocket for this. But this has turned out to be a pretty cool little uh, radio setup that I can't stop playing with. I kind of flashed this on the uh, video I did on the ICOM uh, ICT-10, and I wanted to you know, talk a little bit about the antenna. So let me get the FT4X out of the way. So what I selected here for the antenna, um, and I, I have to admit what initially caught my eye was I just like the way it looks, and, and fortunately it turns out because it's a diamond product, it actually works pretty good for a little stubby antenna. So the antenna I'm talking about here is the Diamond RH3. Now, the first thing to know about this antenna is this is a BNC antenna. So if you want to put this on your radio, you're going to have to have some kind of a BNC adapter on the radio, which I already have for the VX6. So let me show you kind of how it uh, goes on there. I've got my BNC adapter obviously screwed into the into the top here, and these are pretty easy to find. They're not that expensive. You're talking an outlay of, you know, just a, a few bucks. The uh, antenna itself, the RH3, is, of course, a dual band, uh, and the specs are actually on the antenna, 144, uh, 430, 1200 megahertz, and wideband. Um, it's, a, as I said, it's a little stubby thing. They call it the bullet. It is not flexible, but it is very, very, very short, very small, very compact. Um, so let's go ahead and put this back on here. And it's it's got a pretty cool look to it. Like I said, uh, the lack of flexibility, not that much of a concern given the overall length of the thing. It uh, really, You really can't put too much leverage on it. And, you know, as with any antenna, of course, you have to be careful with it. But uh, let me talk a little bit about the, the testing that I've done on this. SWR, uh, pretty good. Surprisingly, I thought the SWR would be better in, in the UHF band, um, but it actually is better in the VHF band. It's a little bit lower, but I, I think it, at worst, I think I was at about a, a 1.2 um, on the VHF, and I think I was uh, 1.8 almost verging on 2 in the UHF, so uh, not overly concerning. And again, uh, SWR doesn't always tell the whole story. But do keep in mind we are talking about a compromised antenna. It is a little stubby thing. And remember that the primary use for this is for monitoring, of which it uh, has pretty good receive. I, I really haven't, uh, haven't had, found any problems with its, its receive. It, uh, it catches all the signals that I'm, I'm used to uh, intercepting with the other antennas that I have on the radio, so I'm happy with that. In terms of output, though, uh, in terms of transmit, it's going to be challenging um, unless you're hitting a, a really good repeater. Don't expect a heck of a lot of range out of this thing. As a short-range antenna, it's uh, as expected uh, within... You know, within eyesight, within uh, 400 yards or so, um, pretty good reception, uh, or, or rather pretty good signal uh, signal reports. I still need to do a bit more testing on this. I'm going to have this when I uh, go out to field day at the end of June and play around with this some more, get some guys to maybe uh, help me walk test this thing and see how it works uh, around a uh, suburban and slightly urban environment because we're going to be doing field day in uh, basically a city park location, but in a very small town. So we'll, we'll be messing around with this more in the future. But uh, other changes that I made on the radio, of course, uh, remove the, the, the clip on the back, um, or the hook, rather, uh, for this. But it makes for a nice little compact, cool little package. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. And uh, retail on this antenna, by the way, is $26.95. And like I said, for the BNC adapter, uh, expect to pay less than $10 for a good BNC adapter. I, I got this from Ham Radio Outlet, and you can get the BNC adapter and the antenna from them. And, I, and like I said, $26.95 for the antenna, and I, I think um, like $8.95 or something for the actual BNC adapter if you don't already have one. And you should so that you can uh, um, tie into uh, uh, other things like mag mounts or 
other types of antennas where you might want to extend the range on the radio. So just thought I'd throw that real quickie out there in case you were interested, in case you saw it in that last video and were wondering what was up. That's the story on this. Uh, I'll report more when I uh, get the headset in. And uh, as I said, I was going to try to uh, wire in a set of earbuds to uh, the headset. And I actually managed to find some iPhone earbuds that I'm going to try to incorporate into that. And um, try to incorporate some kind of, a, and I don't, I don't know how well it'll work, but uh, um, the, the headset itself does come with a push to talk. So I got to find a way to kind of hide that a little bit. But um, I'll, I'll keep you updated as the project continues. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee in Southwest Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.